Your Honor, please take a look at this. <clears throat> That's not my intention at all. Yes, Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? That's exactly what I'm driving at. Because the vic defendant's fingerprints are over all, all over the knife. If Mr. Odgard was really in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder, then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have had to, he would have wiped off all finger all previous fingerprints on this knife right off. Bingo! Nickel Samurai wears gloves. Objection! I don't buy it, Mr. Edgeworth. Objection, Your Honor. Why would he do something like that? To leave his finger, leave his fingerprints all, all over the murder weapon? There's no way he would have done something like that. Let's hear your possibility. point there, Mr. Edgeworth. Too bad it's incorrect. It's well known that there was bad blood between the defendant and the victim. Yes, I'm aware of that, Mr. Edgeworth. Let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with his theory? Actually, yes. I would say there are. contradicts something in an earlier testimony. Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Rongar was the killer. If that's the case, I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without a tent. It was used by Mr. On Guard at dinner. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Corita. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant had no intent no intent to murder. If that were true, now, why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he?
Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from suspicion. Supposition one. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should have been glove marks left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprints should not have been all over it like bees on a hive. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. It's to free my client, Mr. Ongard, of course. Objection, your honor. We just established that the witness saw the nickel samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't have been a single fingerprint on this knife. Witness, did you or did you not see really see the witness then nickel samurai are you saying you mixed up mr ongo with the nickel samurai his character on television what she wasn't waiting for the nickel samurai all right, then. Who were you waiting around for, then? I have a feeling you were waiting for Mr. Juan Carita. Am I correct, witness? So the witness was... Waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Carita. Hmm. If it's who I think Mia is hinting at, it's certainly possible. Witness. You were waiting around for this person to come out of the victim's room. Weren't you? I'm thinking it was... who would have a motive to actually frame Matt Matthew on guard well one person I should say Adrian Andrews this is Adrian Andrews mr. Matthew on guards manager Judge seems to be really into this article. If it can be called such a thing. Adrian Andrews, without a doubt. Witness thought so as well.
What for? Personal reasons? I think not. Secret information, huh? Fine. Never heard that one before. What about this Adrian Andrews person, Mr. Edgeworth? This proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So that means that to smash this rumor once and for all. Go Adelie, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> 